A Strong Day, be your best every day. Hi, I'm Adimus, founder and director of Strong Optimizer. I aim to help you stay healthy, be happier, and deal with challenges with greater resilience. Do you feel that you belong? What does the science say about our sense of belonging? And how can we help children foster a sense of belonging through their school? Today, you will meet Dr. Kelly Ann Allen. Kelly will show you how to help schools, communities, and organizations increase belonging and resilience. Thank you. Hi, I'm Demus, founder and director of Strong Optimizer. Thank you for watching Strong Optimizer, the Science Up Your Wellbeing series. Today, we have Dr. Kelly Allen joining us. Kelly is an educational and developmental psychologist, senior lecturer at Monash University, and a senior honorary fellow of the University of Melbourne, interested in the science of longing. She's also the current editor in chief of the educational and developmental psychologist and founding editor in chief of the Journal of Belonging and Human Connection. With more than 10 years of experience as a school psychologist, she combines her academic interests with her knowledge as a practitioner to translate scientific understandings to apply context and educational settings. I'm so grateful that you can join us today. Kelly, how are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. No <laughs> We've just come out of lockdown here in Melbourne. So exactly. Yeah. So keep keep hooray. <laughs> Right, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I understand that obviously apart from being an academic and researchers and you're also a mom of two, so I do understand that uh, you know, your life is full of many responsibilities and commitments and uh, fun things to do as well. So once again, thank you for taking the time to share with us your research and practice in the science of belonging, particularly how we can help children develop a sense of school belonging. So Kelly, um, I'm just curious to find out what brought you to focus on the science of belonging at the first place. I mean, um, what are some of your beliefs and aspirations? Yeah, you know, it's um, what, what brought me to this place of being interested in belonging research is something I think about all the time. And I think through my life, I've had a series of events that have made me question my own sense of belonging. But then there have been some pivotal moments that made me think, actually, school belonging is pretty important for students. Yeah. And one of the, um, I guess, one of the, the things that really drove me to do a PhD is I met this lady who was living in her car. And um, I, you know, after a long time you know, being aware that she was, she was living in her car, um, I struck up the carriage to knock on her window to ask if she was okay. And um, after we sort of, by the way, I knocked on her window at night time, which oh, I don't right. recommend to anybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> after we both got over our initial fright, yeah. um, she's, she had revealed that she was living in her car. Um, she would fled domestic violence and she was parked around the corner from her school. And it also happened to be the school that I was working at at the time. And she was just so empowered and empowered to be living in her car, um, you know, free from her husband who wasn't being very kind to her as well as, um, you know, free from rent and all the financial pressures. So there she was articulate, empowered, and she talked about how safe she felt being mm. near her and this immense sense of belonging to her school even though she graduated 20 years earlier and that's what made me think well you know you're looking at someone who's in a time of stress and vulnerabilities mm -hmm. and here she is empowered feeling safe and um, talking about how connected she was to her school at the time and that made me think I wonder what the ingredients are uh, yeah. for school belonging like how you know this school that I was working at at the time I think they did yeah. belonging and school belonging really well mm -hmm. but it made me think well I wonder what are the ingredients so that all schools could yeah. create a sense of belonging for students wow what a powerful story I mean like I'm just imagining someone fled from domestic violence living by herself in the car where I guess that uh, based on a, a general society standard like you know, that, that is the, one of the last places you want to be 
all by yourself, perhaps in high distress, frightened, constantly in city. But in fact, the, the vibe or the impression that you get from her is that, that she's so empowered and, and say on the fact that the proximity to her school somehow have this, I guess that gave her this, this, this courage to say that, hey, I'm, I'm all right. And I, I, I've done the hardest part, which is to leave this domestic yeah. violence relationship. Um, I don't know, obviously, where, she's, what she, where she was at and where she's right now, but certainly perhaps she was also thinking about uh, starting a plan, a new plan, a new chapter for her life too. So thank you for sharing that very, very powerful story. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it was quite a pivotal moment for her and her, in her life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, we're going to dive into the uh, school belonging a little bit more deeper. But before that, I'm just curious to find out what are the core components of belonging? Yeah, the core components of belonging, and it's interesting that you've asked me this because I yeah. only very recently wrote a paper the other day with a group of um, other researchers also interested in belonging. And what we did is we synthesised the research and the main theoretical constructs around um, belonging research yeah. and came, came up with four main areas that we yeah. see as being the core components of belonging. And, and I'm talking about general belonging mm -hmm. here. So the first one, and this will kind of make sense, and, and the way that we've conceptualised it is we've come at it, well, I've certainly come at it from a practitioner point of view because I've sort of straddled the um, the division between practice and academia since being mm. an academic because my background um, is, was as a school psychologist. Yeah. So yeah. the first component is competency and skill. Mm. And we see this as a really important mechanism for belonging because a lot of people derive their sense of belonging from social interactions and relationship. Yep. And yet without those social and emotional learning skills and competencies, mm. people that are striving or have a need for a sense of belonging may feel unfulfilled if they don't have those social skills that, that yep. enable them to connect. Okay, yep. The next one is um, opportunities to belong and we you know we see this as really important um, like in school especially or even at the university level but also in life generally having yeah. those groups um, and you know family gatherings and um, hobbies and opportunities to connect are really important and sometimes they can be the first thing to go when yep. we're really busy and stressed, and yet they they actually might have a benefit in mitigating that stress. But also we saw them um, drop off a little bit during COVID-19 mm. when we couldn't physically connect with people. Yep. Um, and then we saw people pivot to creative ways like catching up on Zoom. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> another one, um, another pocket. So the third pocket is motivation and need. And of course, this, yeah. uh, you know, there's a whole body of work within this space. Um, but it does remind us that, you know, people's need to belong, while it's considered to be universal in that mm. everybody has a sense of belonging, that need can fluctuate between individual to individual but even yeah. throughout our lives as well and then the last one which I saw is so important um, particularly for working with adolescents um, was perceptions um, and I think sometimes we might have early childhood experiences um, and they might start from birth but they mm. can shape our feelings about belonging yeah. and then inform the way we might perceive particular social situations or particular challenges. And we might frame them in a way um, cognitively with our thinking yeah. that might not be that conducive to belonging. So when young people would come and see me when I was a school psychologist, they would say, I feel left out. No one's talking to me. I don't belong at this school. All my friends hate me because everything was, you know, um, all or nothing and, and yeah. quite black and white. And, um, you know, I would say to them, okay, well, you've just told me all the reasons why you don't belong. Mm -hmm. Let's start looking at some of the reasons why you do belong. So yeah. that perception and attribution and reshifting that mindset is mm -hmm. really important for belonging as well. And we see a whole bunch of work in that domain, yeah. Yeah. Some really good work in that area. Yeah. So it sounds like the, the, um, the construct of belongings are multidimensional. I mean, I don't know. As a form, we just talk about uh, its competency or skill base. That uh, because I guess uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And part of core belonging is that uh, is to make some sort of human connections, 
in order to make connections, then some sort of skills, social skills will be important. Is that, is that right? Well, yes and no. And that's a really important question to ask, actually. It's a really yeah. good question because um, I see myself in the belonging space as a little bit trans-theoretical um, yeah. and not necessarily identifying with one particular frame or viewpoint. Mm. Um, but there are belonging researchers um, who really specifically look at belonging um, in the context of relationships. So mm. take Bowmeister and Leary Prop probably two of the most famous belonging researchers um, in the world. Yeah. And, you know, their belongingness hypothesis really emerged from that motivation to relate with other people. Mm. So people were quite central to that perception or that, that, you know, that element of belonging. And I think when I interviewed Leary recently, he said that mm. he, if he wrote the paper again, he wrote a 1995 paper with Bowmeister, um, has been cited over 26,000 times. And if he wrote it again today, yeah. um, he, he might interchange the word um, belonging with accepted, um, for instance, feeling, that sense of feeling accepted. Yeah. So, um, yes, <laughs> so I've gone, off, I've gone off track a little bit. My point oh, yeah. was, was supposed to say that yeah. belonging is, from my perspective, isn't just about relationships with other people. People can have a strong sense of belonging to um, their culture, to their land, uh -huh. to an institution, yes. to a place. And that's where I feel um, that the, you know, the definition of belonging in some ways can be more, um, more inclusive to the way mm. that, yeah, because that say sense of culture um, can can be so fundamental to a person's identity and who they are. Yep. When they lose a sense of belonging, then it can um, be quite detrimental to their mental health. Mm. Thank you for clarifying that, that when you talk about the constructive belonging, yes, human connections are one of the important elements, but it's not the only element because you talk about uh, there's also can be a sense of belonging that's related to you know, the cultures or perhaps certain beliefs or, or ideals. And you also mentioned the word acceptance, if I hear you correctly. Yeah, acceptance. That sense of feeling um, accepted and, and like you, yeah, are accepted and valued by other people. Mm, wonderful, wonderful. All right. So when, when we move a little bit closer to the um, school belonging, so Kelly, how do you define school belonging then? Yeah. Uh, um, well, look, I, I draw from the most widely um, defined <laughs> definition, sorry, the most, the most, yeah, widely used definition of school belonging. And that's the one by Goody now and Grady. It's a 1993 definition, but it's about mm. feeling accepted, respected and valued um, within the school environment. And I like it because it draws on those, um, you know, core principles of feeling accepted and valued. But it also um, talks about the school environment as well. Mm. And um, I ha very much have a systems lens when I look at school belonging um, and believe there's no, no, one, um, no one intervention or no one approach that can increase school belonging. It's actually multiple things within the system. And that's um, why that's my, my preferred definition of school belonging right now. Yeah, the, the more comprehensive one to say, I think that it's also resonant to you perhaps as a um, practitioner and as a researcher as well i think so yep it gives you things to do and and i think that's that's kind of what motivates me to do the work i'm doing yeah fabulous fabulous and earlier on we talk about on um, for melbourneian so to speak you know we're just coming out from the um lockdowns and we do understand that the covid 19 lockdowns have resulted in many school closures, including my son's school, okay, which disrupted students' sense of um, school belonging. So why is school belonging critical in building students' mental health well-being, psychosocial functioning, and their yeah, academic motivation? Yeah, absolutely. Look, the this, I mean, this the school, the physical building of the schools closed down, but obviously there was elements of schools that still existed during the lockdowns. Um, I think one thing that we know from the belonging research, so there's early indicators that students' sense of belonging did decline during the, the lockdowns and the school, um, the school's not opening to physically be present. 
Um, but one thing that we know about belonging is that, as particularly school belonging, is that mm. being at school is a, is a factor that helps predict school belonging. So um, in terms of um, like the mental health outcomes of students, it's too early to tell whether there's yeah. um, been any detrimental effects related to school belonging. But we know school belonging is so important for mental health. We've got um, Elizabeth Parr's research that showed mm. general belonging was the, the largest known correlate with depression predicting something like 40% of the variance um, in her research with Ian Shoshay. Um, we know, I've just recently done some research with the Australian Temperament Project, and we've seen the benefits of belonging to school at the age of 15. We've seen mm. the benefits last up to 28 years of age wow. for stress, depression and anxiety. Absolutely. We've seen similar effects for outcomes related to employment, training and further education. Mm -hmm. And we know that it's an important predictor of positive youth development, again, with benefits in, in adulthood as well. So I think these elements parceled up together, um, you know, indicate like str stronger mental health and greater satisfaction in life and, and improved well-being. And we know that when students don't feel that sense of belonging to school, they're more likely to engage in things like um, truancy or school dropout, mm -hmm. um, fighting vandalism, substance abuse, um, and those kind of behaviours that aren't that conducive yeah. to doing that well at school. So, um, you know, we know that it's quite an important construct. Mm. And I guess in general, most educators and parents, I guess that intuitively speaking, will understand that you know, the, the school belonging is critical to the children's and adolescents' development. And uh, I'm just wondering, like, uh, what are some of the school level practices that uh, you know, we can do to promote school belonging? I understand that this is a, a big topic, but uh, in summary, whether there's any tip or strategies that you can offer? It's a big topic. It is. I did a meta-analysis with Lee Waters and Diane Bella Broderick, Peggy Kern and John Hattie in 2018. Um, and it was a big one. And we spent a lot of time looking at the factors and the effect sizes that predict school belonging. Um, one of the biggest ones that came out with the strongest relationship was those close adult relationships and specifically the teacher-student relationship that has such a powerful effect um, in terms of belonging to school. So in terms of strategies, it's about, um, you know, it's about teacher well-being, isn't it? It's about mm. teacher sense of belonging to school as well, which we know predicts student belonging. But it's about teachers having time to build the connections and valuing building those connections because with heavy curriculums, um, those relationships may not necessarily be um, at the top of the priority list mm. um, or big class sizes. There can be, there can certainly be a lot of barriers to that. So yeah. close adult relationships, absolutely. Um, when we interviewed students and, and elicited ideas from them about what increases belonging, they also mirrored similar um, similar responses they wanted to know they wanted teachers to know their name they wanted teachers to be able to identify if they weren't traveling well um, and if, if they were sad or they had a challenge that they wanted teachers to be able to be able to spot that and you can really only do that if you know the students well um, they, they wanted support for learning and they wanted this, and this was a really interesting one. And we see this right across the sector. We see this in higher ed as well. They want help building connections with other peers as okay. well. And I think back to my time, um, as a school psychologist, often the year level coordinator, um, would spot those students that had been socially rejected or isolated yeah. and they would go and tap you know, a student, um, a responsible student on the shoulder and say, hey, do you think you could watch out for, mm -hmm. um, you know, so and so today? Uh, but also, you know, being ha able to have those groups and activities at lunchtime and recess are really important. It's, it's about those school sanctioned activities yeah. that can help create those social connections that students find really important. Mm. So once again, the educators or the teachers, they play such a significant role 
in facilitating school belonging. And uh, if I may just, I guess, uh, being a devil's advocate here a little bit in terms of, you know, especially for the teachers who are listening and saying, that, okay, I know I play a role, but as you mentioned earlier, sometimes there could be the you know, school level restrictions or there could be the policy restrictions, there could be the practical resources restrictions that um, one teacher or two teacher versus 20, 30 students. And yeah. on top of the teaching, so to speak, um, responsibility. Um, I guess that how, how can teachers educated get around with beginning to not only embrace and accept the yes, I play a role in promoting school belonging, but also be empowered like with some sort of capabilities? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, and I, you know, I think particularly when I talk to young people and children, I'm blown away by the level of insight and creativity in which um, they can arrive at solutions. And so, you know, as a way, and it might not be a fix, but those barriers that you described for the teachers, they're also the barriers for the students. And maybe, um, you know, bringing it to the table with students, teachers could bring it to the table and sit down with students and talk about some of the barriers and what ideas they might have mm. to, to overcome some of these barriers and build their sense of belonging, but also to tap into what's actually working well within yeah. the school that builds a sense of belonging, not, not just going thinking if nothing's working at all, but to actually go in with that strength-based approach and say, well, you know, yeah, some students have a sense of belonging. What's actually working well? So what can we enhance? What can we continue? What can we build on? Yeah, yeah. And I like the idea once again, and I thank you for reminding all of us again. Yes, at times it's important to look at, okay, what's wrong? But yet it's also equally important to look at what is working out, what is working well. Uh, what's uh, the, some of the res existing resources or assets or talents that we can leverage at the individual as well as the school level, so yeah, I'm grateful that you have added um, us uh, this. Um, and also hearing that uh, when you talk about having an open discussion between the teacher and students sounds like a collaborative, collaborative kind of approach. And yeah. I like also the idea you're talking about noticing. You know, students like when students notice who they are, not just in terms of their names, but whether they're traveling well or, not, or when they're not traveling well. So having that, that mindful moments that to notice in the classroom setting, outside classroom settings, can be a catalyst, perhaps, or an ingredient to continue to uh, sow into promoting school belonging. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, I only have one more question for you, Kelly, and got nothing to do with school belonging. Uh, once again, <laughs> we understand that we all have just come up on the lockdowns. I'm just wondering what is one thing that you have been doing this week to look after your own well-being? You know, within the last week in terms of well-being, yeah. um, I've been really lucky because we've just emerged from lockdown. We've had that chance to be able to connect up with friends. So, you know, we've had a children's birthday party oh. and... Um, before that, um, last week we had Halloween, which is oh, yes. my, my absolute favourite celebration because it gives you that opportunity to dress up, which I don't yeah. mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, really get out and, and get to know your neighbours and, and the local community. And um, where we live, it was just beautiful to see the local community come together yeah. um, at a time where it was safe to be able to do that. And mm -hmm. um you know, celebrate together and, and uh, yeah, and get to know each other. And, and sometimes we might not always feel a sense of belonging to, particularly with new groups and new places, mm -hmm. but we need to recognise that sometimes that can take time. Yeah. And, um, yeah, th but that that's how I improved my well-being over the last week. <laughs> I think that that's also one classic example of, um, once again, deliberate creating connections and uh, yeah. uh, others with your friends or family or neighbor and utilizing the opportunity as you said to get to know one another particularly the needs of being valued being appreciated accepted being known um we all know that you know, part of the human connection is one of the consistent key ingredients of flourishing of enhanced well-being as well yeah absolutely well, I'm afraid that's all the time that we have for today. Once again, thank you for joining us, Kelly. 
And if you want to engage Kelly's expertise in having schools, communities, and organizations to increase belonging and resilience, I believe you can visit her website at drkellyallen.com. I repeat that again. That's drkellyallen, A-L-L-E-N.com. Thank you for watching. I'm Ademus from Strong Optimizers, and we are here to bring out the best in you by optimizing your strengths. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.